In this video we're going to look at quadratic equations. The general form of a quadratic equation is given to be y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c where a, b and c are constants and a cannot be equal to zero. Okay, let's look at this. How do we know that's a quadratic equation? Well, the highest power of the x terms is x squared. If this was just y is equal to bx plus c, it would be a linear equation. If I had ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, it would be a cubic equation. So we can tell that it's a quadratic as we've got this x squared term to be the highest power. I just introduced the word constant. A, B and C are constants. That means that they're a fixed value. So an example of a quadratic equation might be Y is equal to 2X squared plus 4X minus 3. So this time now we've got A, B and C and we've got 2, 4 and minus 3. These values are not going to change. The 2, 4 and the minus 3 are not going to change x is what we call an independent variable and y is the dependent variable. So if I put now x is equal to 0 and I'm choosing a nice easy value, we can find out what y would be. So 2 lots of naught squared is naught, 4 lots of naught is naught, minus 3. That means that if I put x is naught, y is going to be 3. So this is the one I chose, the independent variable, and this is the one that our equation gives us. We could also write this as the f of x. So the f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to zero. These are often interchanged. And you might even see a graph now, and it might say y is equal to the f of x. So if you see a graph, and you'll be given a function of x. So what I could do now here is the f of zero. So if I do the f of 0, it's simply saying that I'm putting naught or 0 through this equation, and we could say that that was going to be minus 3. So this is a quadratic equation. ax squared plus bx plus c, we can either write it as y is equal to or the f of x. We say in this particular case, y is a function of x. That won't always be the case in terms of y and x. We might have, for example, in mechanics, displacement. Displacement is given as s. So, for example, now, displacement is a function of time. So we might have 4t squared minus 3t plus 6. So, again, this is a quadratic equation. It's just now in terms of t. I can tell it's a quadratic equation as we've got a t squared as our highest power. We call this a polynomial. If I wanted to know where the displacement or where this particle was, for example, now uh, at time t is equal to zero, so let's put now at the start, so if t is equal to naught, four lots of naught minus three lots of naught plus six, we could say now that s was equal to six. If I wanted to know where it was after one second, if I put in t is equal to one, four lots of one squared is four, minus three lots of one, which is gonna end up giving me one, plus the 6, we could say the displacement would be 7. And generally, that would be given in metres. So all I'm doing is evaluating 1 squared is 1, 4 times 1, minus 3 lots of 1, plus 6. So this is another example of a quadratic equation. Often students wonder why we study quadratics, and they think, what, how can it apply in real life? Quadratics are everywhere. So, for example, we can see them in science, we can see them in nature, we can see them in sport, as we've just seen, we can see them in mechanics. We can even see them in real life situations. So, what we're going to do in this video is look at solving some basic quadratics. We're going to look quickly at what the graphs look like, and then ultimately I want to be able to answer a real-life question using a quadratic equation. When you first look at this question, you're probably going to think, well, what on earth has that got to do with quadratics? What we'll do is look at solving it using a quadratic equation. So let's have a look at that question. We've got here a group of people are in a lottery syndicate and they won £400 one week. So this lottery syndicate won £400. They sh they share the money equally, so the money's been split between each person equally. If there had been two more people in the syndicate, 
each person would have had £10 less or one ten pounds less. How much did each person get? Now you could do this with trial and error, so these numbers work out quite nice. But if I change them, it would become a bit of a nightmare. And what we're going to do is look at forming a quadratic equation and solving it to get now a solution to this problem. When we're talking about quadratic equations, they have a maximum of two real solutions. Some have none, some have one, which is a repeated solution, so essentially two, and some have two real solutions. What we're going to do is start off by looking at the graphs of quadratic equations. I'm going to spend a whole video looking at the main features of them and how we can manipulate them, but essentially I just want to get some idea of what they look like. So let's choose now three different equations. Let's have y is equal to x squared. And this is a graph that you would have seen before. Let's take y is equal to x squared minus x minus 6. And then we'll have y is equal to minus x squared. Uh, let's have plus 2x and then we'll have plus 8. Now this graph is fairly straightforward. You probably have dealt with it in the past and it should be really quite familiar. What I've got here is a graphing calculator. So this now gives us y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now if a was naught and I just changed b, and this is quite sensitive so bear with me while I'm doing this. If I now change this to let's go for, uh, let's go for x plus 3. That's a straight line, and you've met that many, many times before. So this is now when a is equal to 0. If I change this now to 1, we can see that we've got now a curve. This curve is called a parabola. Generally, quadratic equations will have a parabola that looks something like this. If I increase the value of a, we can see that it's getting tighter and tighter to the y-axis, or it's being stretched upwards. If we take a down back to zero and then we go negative with it, we can see that it's flipped over. So if we have a negative x squared term, it's going to open up downwards. Positive is opening upwards, negative is opening downwards. We would call this now a maximum point, so the maximum point of the function, and we would call this the minimum point of the function. So let's go back and look at what we've got. y is equal to x squared. So if we put this in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, we can see that in this particular case, a is going to be equal to 1, b is going to be equal to 0, and c is going to be equal to 0. This one, a would be equal to 1, b will be equal to minus 1. And it's really important that we understand that that's a minus. Often students just want to put now that c, for example, is going to be 6. It's minus 6. If we look at the last one, a is equal to minus 1. b is going to be equal to positive 2. And c is going to be equal to positive 8. If the coefficient, that is the number in front of the x squared term, is positive, our parabola will open upwards like so. Sometimes lower down the school, you're told that if this is positive, it's a happy, smiley face. If it's negative, then it's a sad face like so. I prefer not to go there. I'm sure it's perfectly fine with the younger pupils. I just think it's a bit, uh, a bit naff. Um, but essentially, that's what we get. So let's go ahead now and graph y is equal to x squared. So we're going to have now our coefficient of the x squared term is going to be 1. And that will, there we go, little, nearly... There we go. This is going to be 0. Let's put that on 0. And this is going to be on 0. OK, so we can see now that we're going to get 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. We're going to get negative 1, 1. We're going to get negative 2, 4. As when we square a negative term, as we know, we're going to get a positive value. So this now is your typical parabola, positive parabola opening upwards. Let's look at the next one. The next one now was x squared minus x, so minus 1, the b term was minus 1, minus 6. So let's move that out there. There's minus 6. Uh, OK, let's just put it back. Right. OK, so this is what we end up having, and it's going to look something like so. So we've got this minimum point here, and it crosses the x-axis in two, place, uh, two places. This means that it's got two distinct real solutions. We can see that one of those is at minus 2 and one of them is at 3. 
If the graph does not cross the x-axis, there's no real solutions. So for example, now, if I put this up here now, like so, we've got no real solutions to this equation. In a later video, we're going to look at something called the discriminant, and that determines the number of real roots that we have to an equation. For now, though, I just want to get some understanding of what this looks like. So let's put that back at minus 6, and that does something like so. So that's our quadratic equation. So positive x squared term, and it's just 1. I could, of course, change that to 2, and we would have a stretch upwards. And again, you might have seen some basic stretches when you've looked at graph transformations. OK, let's look at our other one. Our other one was minus x squared. So we need the coefficient, that is the number in front of the x squared term, to be minus 1. Then we had plus 2x and we had plus 8. So we can see that we're going to get real solutions to this equation and we're going to have 2. As it's crossing now, there we go, it's crossing in two places on the x-axis. We've got a negative x squared term, so it's going to open up downwards. This gives us a maximum point, and here are two solutions. So we can see minus 2 and 4. Shortly, we'll look at how we find those, uh, those roots or the solutions to the equation. So that gives us some idea. Now, of course, if I change this and take that value of c down, somewhere down here, we can see there's no real solutions to that equation. So there we go. That now is a brief introduction to what the quadratic graph will look like. We call it a parabola, and it is symmetric. OK, let's go back now and look at some basic quadratic equations. So now what I'm going to do is write the following. If I write, uh, let's go for x squared minus x minus 6. At the moment, this is an expression. As soon as I put y is equal to x squared, in fact, let's put 0, let's put in 0. Let's change this now to an equation. So if I put in 0 is equal to x squared minus x minus 6, this is an expression. So we call this an expression, and we call this an equation. So once we have now the uh, equal sign in, it becomes an equation. An expression doesn't have an answer. We can evaluate an expression. So if we let, uh, let x be equal to 1, we could evaluate this expression right here, and we would end up now with 1 squared, which is 1, minus 1, which is 0, minus 6. We could say now, let x be equal to 1, therefore we would end up now with minus 6, as now, if we just evaluated uh, 1 through here. With this, with an equation, we can solve this and find the roots of the equation, or the solutions to the equation. In this video, we're going to look at the two basic methods of finding the solutions or the roots to quadratic equations. In the next couple of videos, we will look at tougher examples when we need to use different methods. When I'm solving quadratic equations, I think to myself, how can I do this in the easiest way possible? So for example, when you're in a classroom, if you want to turn the lights off, you can go and just push the light switch. You wouldn't run towards it with a broom handle and smash the whole thing to bits, or you wouldn't chuck a rock at the lights to turn it off. It's the same with a quadratic equation. Look at the easiest possible way to solve and see if it works for you. So what we're going to do is look at the most straightforward quadratic equations. Let's take now x squared is equal to 25. So x squared is equal to 25. It's a quadratic equation as we've got an x squared term. What we want to do is look at solving this. All we need to do for this particular equation is square root both sides. Square rooting is the inverse of squaring. In the same way that if you think about, uh, if you multiply and divide, they are inverses. Squaring and square rooting. So what we would now write is x is equal to, and we have plus or minus the square root of 25. Students often forget that there's going to be up to two solutions to a quadratic. Now, if we think about this, 5 times by 5 is going to be equal to 25, but also minus 5 times by minus 5 is equal to 25. Therefore, we can say x will be equal to plus or minus 5. So nice and straightforward, that is about your easier sort. If you're given that, um, you're in luck. Or if your equation that you're dealing with reduces to this, you're very, very lucky. 2x squared is equal to 70, let's go for 72. 
dividing both sides by 2, x squared is 36. So x will be equal to plus or minus the square root of 36. So x will be equal to plus or minus 6. You might think that's a lot of uh, messing about. I would like to see that from the start so you're showing full workings. It gets you into a good habit. Uh, let's look at another one. Let's say we've got now, uh, let's go for 3x squared. Let's do 3x squared minus 1 is equal to 26. Let's add 1 to both sides. So we've got 3x squared is equal to 27. Divide both sides by 3. x squared is equal to 9. x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9 x is equal to plus or minus 3. Now, how do I know that that works? Well, let's go ahead and check it. If I put in now 3 in here, 3 squared is 9. 3 times by 9 is 27. Minus 1 is 26. If I put minus 3 in here, minus 3 squared is 9. 3 times by 9, minus 1 is 26. So do check, as often it, you won't be as confident when you're dealing with a particular example. Okay, let's look at another one. So let's go for x minus 3 all squared is equal to 5. Now, what do we do here? Well, many students want to expand the brackets and mess about with it and do loads of different things. All I'm going to do is square root both sides. So x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. We've looked at thirds before. This is going to give us an exact answer. So what we're going to have, adding the 3 to both sides, 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. We don't write a decimal answer, we leave it as it is. So if we wanted to draw this, let's have a look at that, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so this is going to be now my graph. If I wanted to draw this, we're going to have now a parabola. And I'm going to put the roots or the solutions to this equation on. And I'd write them now as 3 plus root 5, and then we'd have now 3 minus root 5. So if we think about now the, the root of 4 is 2, the root of 5 isn't going to be an awful lot more. So what we've got then is a parabola that looks something like so. So we've got these two roots and we leave them in exact form. This is exact form. Exact means that I'm leaving it as a third. Okay, so that's a, another example of where we would square root both sides. Let's look at something else. Let's go for 12x squared divided by 25 minus 48 is equal to 0. Now, this looks a mess, but we can certainly deal with it. What I'm going to do is add 48 to both sides. So 12x squared divided by 25 is equal to 48. At this stage, I'm going to divide both sides by 12. That will give me x squared over 25 will be equal to 4. If I multiply both sides by 25, x squared will be equal to 100. Square root in both sides, x will be equal to plus or minus the square root of 100. And we can see that x will be equal to plus or minus 10. So after something that looked a bit nasty, we end up with a really straightforward equation. Is that going to work? Well, you can go ahead, plug the values in, and you'll see that it does. So they are the easiest types of quadratic equations to deal with, when we simply have to essentially make x squared the subject and then square root both sides. Do remember that you're going to get a plus or minus answer potentially to all of these. Now, whether one of these is valid or not um, is something that we can look at shortly. So that's the first type. If we can't do that, we've got to look at different methods. We're now going to look at factoring quadratic equations to solve. You might have factored quadratic expressions before. We're now going to look at using those to solve. So let's start with the first type. Now, the first type, what I'm going to have is the form y is equal to x squared. Then we're going to have, now let's put this in, we'll have ax squared plus bx. So in this case, I'm going to have c, no c value. So an example of this now, we might have to solve, uh, let's say we had to solve uh, x squared, and then we had plus x is equal to 0. We can see that the a term is 1, the b term is 1, and the c term is 0. When we're solving quadratic equations of this type, we want to set one side of the equation equal to 0. So what we're going to look at doing is factoring to solve. So if I wanted to solve this equation, I would look to factor it. So we've got a common factor of x, so I could write this as x multiplied by the quantity x plus 1 is equal to 0. So all I've done here is taken a factor of x out. Now if we look at this, 
it's telling me that either this is going to be zero, this is going to be zero, or we can consider that both would be zero. As we know, if we multiply any number, so let's do 5 times by 0, that's going to be equal to 0. If we do 0 times by 10, that's going to be equal to 0. So that's how we, how we solve these. So what we can say is either x is equal to 0 or x plus 1 is equal to 0. If x plus 1 is equal to 0, then x is equal to minus 1. So we've got two potential solutions to this quadratic equation. Now, in theory, we've got two solutions. In a practical application, one of these or both of them might not be valid. Um, generally, one of them will be. So let's look at this now. Let's go ahead. If I graph this, if I wanted to graph this now, what I'm going to have is something that looks like so. So I'm going to have a solution here, and I'm going to have a solution here. I'm going to have a positive parabola, and it will look something like that. So we could say now that y is equal to the f of x, and we could say that the f of x is equal now to x squared plus x. I've just set it to naught, and that will give us now the solutions to the equation. Okay, let's look at another one. Let's go for uh, x squared minus 2x is equal to 0. So again, we've got no c term. So factoring, we're going to have x x minus 2 is equal to 0, so x would be equal to 0, or x would be equal to 2. We might have something slightly different. We might have, for example, 2x squared uh, plus, now let's go for 8x, is equal to 0. So again, we've got no c term, we've got no constant, or no term without an x. Highest common factor this time is going to be 2x, then we're going to have x plus 4. So from this, we can see that either x is equal to 0, or if you like, 2x, which means x would be equal to 0, or x plus 4 is equal to 0, which means x is equal to minus 4. Say you had in here, let's say we've got uh, 2x minus 3 as that. Now, that could be equal to 0. If you're unsure of what this is going to be, you can simply go ahead and solve it. So 2x minus 3 is naught. 2x would be equal to 3 and x would be equal to 3 over 2. So, nice and straightforward, that's how you come to solve. So, they are examples of straightforward qu uh, quadratic equations that need a single bracket to factor. What we're now going to do is look at a slightly different example and consider a common misconception. So, let's say we've got x squared is equal to 5x. Many students at this stage write, well, x will be equal to 5 because I'm going to divide both sides by x. By doing this, we're losing a potential solution. What we need to do is get the expression, the 5x now, on to the left-hand side. So we want the expression as x squared minus 5x is equal to 0. Now, we can factor this x x minus 5 is equal to 0, so x would be equal to 0, or x would be equal to 5. Now, both of these hold, because if naught goes in there, that's naught, and that's naught, so that works. Also, if we put 5 in, we've got 5 squared, which is 25, is equal to 5, lots of 5, which is 25. So don't be um, tempted just to say, well, x is 5. We can see that there are two possible solutions to that equation. So, nice and logical, fairly straightforward, and they are the second easiest type to deal with. So, that's fairly, fairly logical. Let's look at just one more before we uh, go. Let's uh, go for uh, minus x squared um, plus, uh, let's go for 2x is equal now to x. What I'm going to do is make my life slightly easier. I'm going to set now the left-hand side to 0. So I'm going to add x squared to both sides. I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. So we end up now with x squared minus x is equal to 0. And we have x, x minus 1. So we can see that the roots would be either x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 1. I think it's personally better to get your coefficient, if you can, when solving as a positive quantity. So your coefficient now on the x squared term, positive. I just have to set one of these sides now to zero. I don't have to set this side, as you might not be as confident. So if we subtracted x from both sides and have minus x squared plus x is equal to zero, in terms of factoring, it makes things slightly harder. 
We're now going to move on to the, uh, the second type of factoring when we have the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, in this case, what we're going to have, and I'll just write it here, we're going to put these in the form now. Zero is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And this time, we will have a, a value of c. So let's take the one that we had before. So let's set this one to zero. Let's solve for this one. We have the x squared minus x minus six. The first thing I say to myself, is this in the form ax squared plus bx plus c? If it is, I want two numbers that multiply to give the c term. So in this case, c is minus six and add to give the b term, which is minus one. So all I do here is set up now open brackets. So I'm gonna have my open brackets like so. So I want two numbers that multiply to give minus six. And remember, this now is minus six. To begin with, if you want to write out, a is equal to one, b is going to be equal to minus one, and c is gonna be equal to minus six, just to be careful. Now, you've probably done some of this before, but let's just think about the numbers that I can multiply to get six. One times by six, or two times by three. I need it to be minus, and I need them to add to give minus one. So if I look at these two, these have got a difference of one, so I could say that two times by minus three, that if I add these two numbers together, it's gonna give me minus one, if I multiply them, it's gonna give me minus six. So in the bracket, we have x and we have x, one of them will be plus two, the other one will be minus three. So I've now factored that. So from here, we can see that x would be equal to either minus two or x would be equal to positive three. And that now gives us our solutions. So we look for two numbers, but multiply to give the C term and add to give the B term. So let's go ahead and solve our equation that we had before, minus x squared plus two x plus eight. With this one, I could factor it in its current form. I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is add x squared to both sides, subtract two x, and subtract eight and set that to zero. I'm now dealing with a positive x squared term. The coefficient on the x squared term is just one. I can factor this, so I'm looking for two numbers. It's in the correct form, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, double brackets. Two numbers that multiply to give minus eight and add to give minus two. So we've got one times by eight or two times by four. We've got negative two here, so that means I need to make the four negative, as now, if I add these two together, I'm gonna to get minus two. So we'll have now x plus two and x minus four, so x would be equal to minus two, or x would be equal to four, and they are the two solutions. Now, when we looked at graphing these, we saw these. Let's just grab that graph up. Um, so let's put it back at eight. That's where we were. So we can see these are the two solutions to our equation, minus two and positive four, which we can see just here. So minus two and positive four, and that's how we come about getting those from before. So that's quadratic uh, factoring when the coefficient on the x squared term is one. We just look for two numbers and multiply to give the c term and add to give the b term. Let's look at uh, another example. Let's go this time. Let's say we've got x squared minus 9x is equal now to minus 20. The first thing I'm thinking now is that this isn't in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So I'm going to add 20 to both sides. x squared minus 9x plus 20 is equal to zero. ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, double brackets, I need two numbers that multiply to give now positive 20 and add to give minus nine. That's going to be minus four and minus five. If this number here is positive, then what we're going to have in the middle right here is either two positive values or two negative values. If we've got now a negative here, we're going to have one positive value and one negative value. So now we can see from here that x would be equal to four or x would be equal to five. And again, you can check those if you want. Okay, let's have a look at this one right here. Let's say we've got now two x plus three all squared is equal to zero. At this stage, many pupils want to expand it out and do something with it. It's already factored. What we've got here is two x plus three 
multiplied by 2x plus 3. And this is going to give us now a repeated root. And that repeated root is x will be equal to minus 3 over 2. So sometimes it'll already be factored for you. Don't go ahead and do anything crazy. So if we looked at this, this would actually be 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. And you would go ahead and factor that. Shortly, we'll look at ways of dealing with that. Um, let's just put a slight flip on this. Let's say we had instead 2x, and we'll go uh, this time, let's say we've got uh, 2x plus 3 all squared um, is equal to 9. Now, again, pupils often want to expand that out and refactor it. But if we look at this, we could just go ahead and square root both sides. So we could say 2x plus 3 would be equal to plus or minus the square root of 9. So we got 2x plus 3 would be equal to plus or minus 3. So all we've got to do is solve two different equations. So the first one is when 2x plus 3 would be equal to 3. So we can see that 2x would be equal to 0 and x would be equal to 0. The other one now would be 2x plus 3 is equal to minus 3. We would subtract 3 from both sides, so 2x would be equal to minus 6, and then x would be equal to minus 3. So we can see that we've got the solutions just here, and straight away you can see that those are going to end up working if you plug them in right there. So if we put 0 in, 3 squared is 9. If we put minus 3 in, minus 6 uh, plus the 3 would give us minus 3. Minus 3 squared is 9. So do be slightly careful. So that's factoring quadratics when the coefficient on the x squared term is just positive 1. So we're looking to factor to solve. Sometimes you'll just be asked to factor an expression. And if that's the case, then you wouldn't set it to 0. You'd just go ahead and factor. OK, we're going to move on now and look at, again, quadratics in the form 0 is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. This time now, the value of a is not going to be 1. So what we say then is that this could be a positive or negative value, but it isn't going to just be 1. The way in which I like to deal with these is slightly different, and it's not mathematically rigorous. I find, though, it can be really quite useful and helpful um, if you're not happy with factoring. So if you've got your own way, please feel free to do that. What we're going to do is factor a quadratic equation to solve. So here's a quadratic equation, and it's 3x squared minus 7x plus 2. So it's in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. This time we've got a is equal to 3, b is equal to minus 7, and c is equal to positive 2. Remember, this is minus 7. What I like to do is set two brackets up. What we're going to do now is multiply the a and the c term. So if I multiply now the a by the c, I'm going to get positive 6. I'm going to put in the front of each bracket 3x. Before we just put x, I'm now going to put in 3x. What I want now are two numbers that multiply to give 6, positive 6, and add to give minus 7. So let's look at what we can have. We can have 1 times by 6 or 2 times by 3. We could see now that I could have minus 1 and minus 6. If I multiply these two, I get 6. If I add them, I get minus 7. So what I'm going to do is put these in. Now, this is where the, the trickery comes in. You look at both of these brackets and you say to yourself, can I divide by a common factor in each of them? Well, this one right here, we can divide this now by 3. So if I do that, I've got x minus 2, and then I've got 3x minus 1 is equal to 0. That is now factored. So that is one way of doing it. I'm not suggesting it's mathematically rigorous. It's quite handy and quite helpful. So from here, we can see that x would be equal to 2 or x would be equal to 1 third. If 3x minus 1 is equal to 0, 3x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 1 third. So let's have a, another go at one of those. Let's go for now. Um, in fact, let's just do this one. Let's do uh, 2x squared minus, let's go for minus 2x and then we're going to get minus 12 is equal to 0. So when you look at that, what are you thinking to yourself? Well, I'm going to get 2, I'm going to get the minus 12. Whenever you get a quadratic like this, look at it and see if you can divide it. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. And we're back to where we began. 
x minus 3, x plus 2 is equal to 0. And that was one that we solved previously. So do check that you can't make your life significantly easier by dividing through by a common factor. So that was an example. Let's look at this one. 12x squared. Uh, let's go for plus 13x and then we'll have plus 3 is equal to 0. So what I want to do is factor to solve this quadratic. So we can see that it's in the form of x squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0 and the coefficient on the x squared term is 12. So it's not 1. So what I'm going to do, and again you might agree or disagree with this method, it's entirely up to you, I'm going to put 12x in both brackets. We put x in both brackets before, all I'm doing is putting 12x. So before it's 1x, now it's 12x. I do a times by c. Now if I do a times by c, let's just put it here, a times by c is going to be 36. So what two numbers could I now multiply to give me 36 and also add to give now 13? I think that's going to be, now if we consider that, that's going to be 9 times by 4. So 9 times by 4 is going to give me 36. And again, you could work through those, 1 times 36, 2, and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do at this stage is put these in. So we're both going to be positive values. So we're going to get plus 9 and we're going to get plus 4. Can I divide each of these brackets by a common factor? I can divide that one by 3. If I divide that by 3, I'm going to get 4x plus 3. If I divide this one by a common factor, I can divide this now by 4. If I divide this by 4, I'm going to get 3x plus 1. So if you expand that out, you're going to get now 12x squared plus 4x plus 9x plus 3, and that works. So 4x plus 3 is equal to 0, then x is going to be, let's write this here, x is going to be now uh, minus 3 over 4. Okay, so let's just put that in. So minus 3 over 4. So uh, x will be equal to minus 3 over 4. Or if we consider this one right here, x will be equal to minus 1 over 3. So if you like that method, you're more than welcome to use it, but you certainly don't have to if you don't want to. It could be argued that it's simpler to use a more uh, traditional technique and mathematically rigorous, but I will leave that with you. Okay, let's look at another one. 6x squared, let's go and let's set this equal now to uh, 25 minus, uh, let's go for minus 5x. So let's go ahead and try and solve this as a quadratic. The first thing I notice now is that I've not got it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So let's rewrite it, 6x squared minus now, and I'll put it in the correct form, plus 5x minus 25 is equal to 0. So we can see that the a value is going to be equal to 6, the b value is going to be equal now to 5, and the c value is going to be minus 25. So what I'm going to do, 6x in both brackets, like so, 6x, set this to 0. So if I do now 6 times by minus 25, that's going to give me minus 150. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give minus 150 and add to give 5. That looks like uh, now 10 times by 15. 10 times by 15, one has got to be positive, one has got to be negative, as we've got a negative value just here. So let's make the negative 10, because that gives us now the 5 and put these in the brackets. So we'll have minus 10 and we'll have uh, plus 15. So what can we divide this one by? Uh, now we can divide that by 2, so that's going to give me 3x minus 5. What can I divide this one by? I can divide that by 3, so that's going to give me 2x, uh, and then we're going to have now plus 5, and that's equal to 0. So let's check that that expands to give me what I want. 6x squared then I'm going to have plus, uh, what's that going to give me? Plus 15x minus 10x minus 25. So we can see that x would be equal to positive 5 thirds and x would be equal to, or potentially equal to minus 5 over 2. So that's just a, a bit uh, a bit of factoring. Um, we'll do one more. Let's go for, let's have minus 2x squared minus 3x is equal to 1. So I'm going to set this side to 0, add 2x squared to both sides, add the 3x, and then we've got plus 1. So in my brackets, I'm going to have 2x, and I'm going to have 2x. I'm going to multiply the a by the c, 2 times by 1, so I've got 2. I need two numbers that multiply to give 2 and add to give 3. Well, that's going to be 1 times by 2. 1 times by 2 gives me 2. 1 plus 2 gives me 3. So I'm going to have plus 2 
and plus 1. I can divide this one by 2, so I'm going to get x plus 1 and then 2x plus 1. That's now equal to 0, so we can see that x would be equal now to minus 1, or x would be equal to minus 1 half. So that now gives us the solutions to our equation. So entirely up to you if you use that method. So that's factoring now when the coefficient on the x squared term isn't 1. We're now going to look at something called the difference of squares. So let's go ahead and look. When we started, we had now x squared is equal to 25. We might be asked to factor this. Now, if I subtracted 25 on both sides, we got x squared minus 25. I'm just going to put a 1 here, OK? And what I've got now is 1x squared minus 25 is equal to 0. That is a square number, that is a square number, and that is a minus sign. Minus subtract means difference. OK, so this is a square number, this is a square number, and we have the difference of squares. We can factor this to x plus 5, x minus 5 is equal to 0. So we can see that our solutions would give us x is equal to minus 5 or x is equal to positive 5. And we knew that anyway, because we could square root. But often when we have what we call now a difference of squares, it can make things significantly easier, especially if we're looking to factor. Uh, let's look at some difference of squares. So uh, if we were asked to just factor this, 25x squared minus 1, that's a square number, that's a square number, that's a difference. So this would be 5x plus 1, and then 5x minus 1. If we had, for example, a, a different type, let's say we had, uh, let's go for 49x squared minus 36 is equal to 0. That's a square number, that's a square number. So we could write 7x plus 6 and then 7x minus 6. Especially when you come on to work with uh, algebraic fractions, we can cancel common factors that didn't seem to be as obvious. So in general, if we have x squared minus y squared, we can write this as x plus y and then x minus y. So this might help you out. Um, it, you might be asked to show that that could be factored as a difference of squares and go on to solve an equation. So difference of squares, just look for two square numbers and a negative sign between them. So for example, now if we had 25x squared plus 4, that's a square number, that's a square number, but that's an addition sign. Uh, so that wouldn't be a difference of squares, and we couldn't factor that in the same way. Okay, now sometimes you've got to be a, a little flexible. Let's look at something slightly different. Let's say we've got five lots of x minus 3, uh, and then we had minus, and let's say we've got x, and then we've got x minus 3 uh, equal to 0. And we wanted to solve this. Now, if we look in both of those terms, there is a, a common factor of x minus 3. So if I take that out, I've got x minus 3. That's going to leave me now 5 minus x. So all I've done is factor that like so. So I've seen that this is a common factor. I've taken it out. So I've got x minus 3 multiplied by 5 minus x is 0. So x would be equal to 3 or x would be equal to 5. Do be flexible. Um, another example, let's say we've got uh, x, 2x minus 1 is equal now to, uh, let's go for 2x minus 1. Um, big error coming up if you're dividing both sides by this quantity. And um, even worse, if you then divide it and put x is equal to naught. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this. x, 2x minus 1, minus the quantity 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. So I simply subtracted this from both sides. Let's go ahead and factor this. 2x minus 1 is a common factor. And that's going to now leave me x minus 1. So we can see from here that either 2x minus 1 would be 0, which means x would be 1 half, or we could see that x would be equal to 1, as x minus 1 is equal to 0. So there we go. Um, that's now working, looking at factoring quadratics, or just square root in both sides. What I'm now going to do is go way, way back and look at the question that we had before and see why this is relevant. So let's go ahead and grab that question. We had now a group of people who were in a lottery syndicate and they won £400 one week. They shared the money equally. If there had been two more people in the syndicate, each person would have won £10 less. How much did each person get? So they've got 400 quid. So let's write 400. So if we consider that there are 
N people or X people. I'm going to use N because I want to get away from this everything is Y is equal to X squared or Y is some function of X. It's not always the case as we've seen with S and T. So what I'm going to say is N is the number of people. So let's just think, if there were N people in the, the, the syndicate, 400 quid is going to be split between them. So for example, if there were four people, they're going to get 100 quid each. Now what we're told here, if there had been two more people in the syndicate, each person would have won £10 less. So what we can do is write this would be equal to 400 divided by n plus now the 2 and then we would need to add 10. What I want you to do is just hit pause and just look at what I've written and see if you can work out the logic of it. So go ahead, hit pause and then we'll come back and look at a solution to this equation. So what I've said is here, now if we got 400 quid divided by this number of people, that's the same as if we had two more, but we would need to add 10 to whatever they've got. You could go the other way. You could say this value minus 10 is equal now to this value right here. It really doesn't matter. This value could be put on here as a negative or here as a positive. Okay, my first move to solve this equation now is to divide the whole thing by 10. You don't have to, but it's going to make your life slightly easier. So what we've got then is 40 over n will be equal now to 40 over n plus 2. So the number of two, uh, people would be increasing by 2. And then we get plus 1. OK, so how do I solve this? At this stage, I'm going to multiply through by the lowest common multiple. And all I'm going to do is just put that this is 1 over 1. The lowest common multiple is going to be now n, n plus 2. If you want, you could do this step by step. I will do it step by step uh, to begin with and it will give you some idea, but later on I would expect you just to multiply through by n, n plus 2. So if I first multiply the whole equation by n, that's going to give me now 40 will be equal to now 40n over n plus 2 plus now n. I'm now going to multiply through by n plus 2. So what we're going to have then is 40, then we'll have n plus 2, will be equal to 40n, and then we'll have n, and then we'll have n plus 2. So all I've done is set this up. So let's expand and simplify and collect this up. So I've got 40n plus 80 will be equal to 40n plus now, and let's just put our n back here, we've got now n, n plus 2. So that was going to give me plus n squared plus 2n. We can see that the 40 n's cancel from both sides. I'm going to subtract 80 from both sides and set the left hand side equal to 0. n squared plus 2n minus 80 is equal to 0. That is a quadratic equation in the form a n squared plus b n plus c is equal to 0. We can factor this. So I need two numbers and multiply to give minus 80 and add to give 2. That will be n plus 10 and then n minus 8. So from here we can see now that n would be equal to either minus 10 or n would be equal to 8. So with our algebra we've got two real solutions to this equation. What I now want you to think about is what, what's going on here. If n is minus 10, well n is the number of people. We can't have now minus 10 people. So we can put now that this is not valid so this is not a valid solution as people will be a positive quantity, or at least now, let's put this in, a positive quantity. We also couldn't have zero in this particular case uh, because uh, we can't divide 40 by zero, it's undefined. So what we do is say that the number of people is going to be eight. So that's using a quadratic equation to look at something that's really quite, um, what would seem that needs trial and uh, trial and error. So if n is equal to 8, let's just put that in. What are we going to get here? If n is equal to 8, uh, 400 divided by 8 is going to give me 50. Um, and then 400 divided by 8 plus 2 is going to give me 40 plus the 10. 50 and 50, that works out. So how much did each person get? The answer now is going to be 50 quid. So nice little quadratic equation. Um, different ways of doing that as well. Um, but that gives you some idea of how these are really useful for solving problems that you probably didn't even think were related to quadratics. So the next time you're sitting in a, a maths lesson, someone says, what's the point of learning this? Um, 
that's just one example. I feel we often fall into the trap of just doing silly little problems involving areas, um, which are, are really, I don't think are completely uh, relevant. So let's say now we have, um, let's say we've got something like this. Uh, let's say we've got now that this value is going to be, uh, let's say we've got X and then X minus one and the area of this garden, this, you know, Farmer Bob's garden is, is 42 meters squared. You know, what's the side length of this? Well, the length times the width, X minus, uh, X minus one multiplied by X has got to be equal to the area. So this might be 42 meters squared. Well, that's going to be 42. So straight away, all we've got is x squared minus x minus 42 is equal to zero. We can factor that x minus seven. Um, x plus six is equal to zero. So x would be equal to seven or x would be equal to minus six. Can x be equal to minus six? Well, it can't because x is a length. So now we would say not a valid solution, just write not valid and give a reason. So we've got now six, uh, seven to be our solution. So this one is seven. And funny enough, seven minus one is six. Six times by seven is 42. So that's the sort of general problem you've thrown. Um, but I think doing things like this is, is slightly more interesting and gets you thinking. So there we go. That's an introduction to quadratic equations. We've looked at basic graphs and we've looked at solving by either uh, square root in both sides or factoring. In the next video, we will look at quadratic equations that don't factor when we either use completing the square or the quadratic equation.